it doesn't have the same hold on me that Sex in the City had. We can put it like that. <laughs> Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Clara and today I am coming at you with a reading vlog because next week, or really to be specific, in five days my next semester of uni will begin and I have a very strong feeling I've overcommitted myself to various organizations and internships and jobs and what have you for the next like four months so I may have to slow down my reading if I want to like, you know, live a sane existence and like get the required amount of sleep for a human being to be able to function properly. So in anticipation of the fact that, you know, my reading will probably be slowing down a bit, I want to try to read as much as I can in the next five days to really just like end the summer on a strong note. So I have four books and we're just going to go through them really quick. So the first book I have here is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This one I'm actually almost done with it, I only have like 60 pages left. I've been reading it this week and basically on the first page you realize that there is this group of five students who have killed one of their fellow classmates and they're all studying classics and so it's very dark academia, very like, you know, um, tweed suits and mahogany and Greek literature, like all of that is the aesthetic of this book and so from there on it's following the students both before and after the murder and how they're coping with it, what led them to kill their classmate, all of that. So I've been really enjoying it so far and hopefully I will be finishing it today. And this is also the biggest book that I have on my reading list for this vlog. So hopefully finishing this will give me like the motivation I need to get through the other ones as well. Then the next book I want to read is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This is the first fiction book that I've read by Virginia Woolf, but previously I have read A Room of One's Own, which I really enjoyed by her. And this I actually don't really know what it's about. I know that a lot of my friends love it. It's not even like 200 pages I think, so hopefully it won't take too long to get through, but also Virginia Woolf can sometimes be difficult to read, so maybe it will take longer. I don't know. All right, then the third book I want to read is If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvino. Again, not like 100% sure what it's about, if it is even about anything. I think that this book is more like a series of incomplete stories than anything else. I think it's sort of like experimental in that way. Again, though, I've had a few friends read it and recommend it to me. Again, quite short, just a little over 200 pages, so hopefully it'll really hits the spot. And then honestly those three books alone might be enough to keep me busy the next few days but if I finish them all and still have plenty of time then the last book on my reading list is going to be Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. This book follows a high school student who I believe something happened to her or she witnessed something happening over the summer and then she basically takes a vow of silence and won't speak and so it's just about her and the people around her trying to figure out what happened, what she saw, all of that. If I get to this, great. If not though, I'll still be reading a lot so I won't be too mad about it. Also, over the next five days, it's not like I'll be able to be like reading for 24 hours a day or anything like that. A, because I am a human being and I need to sleep and eat and do such things. But also because with the semester starting, I'm going to need to, you know, get some certain things wrapped up, get some certain things done, you know, just all the little things that one must do before one gets very busy, such as go to the grocery store and, you know, get whatever books my professors decide to send out to me. I also still don't even know if I'll be in a classroom or on Zoom again this semester because my university deigns to tell us nothing until the very last minute, so I love that for me. We'll just read when we can and we'll just have a great time with it. So I'm gonna read a bit more of The Secret History right now and then I'm gonna meet a friend later, we're gonna go to a museum and probably a coffee shop and read together as well. So yeah, I'll just take y'all along, film little snippets here and there, and we will just get reading. Hey there, a little reading update for you guys. So at Coffee with my friend, I finished The Secret History. Glad to have the biggest book of the bunch done. And then I also read about 15 pages of Mrs. Dalloway. Great writing so far, like obviously, like we all knew Miss Virginia Woolf, she knows what she's doing. I think this is gonna be the type of book that's I'm more here for like the writing style and the vibe and not necessarily the plot. When I am not reading, I have been eating a grilled cheese and then watching Sex in the City.
I'm trying, I'm trying to read Mrs. Dalloway, and it's, it's a great book, like, Virginia Woolf, she knows what she's doing, she really was a writer with a capital W-R-I-T-E-R, incredible, but I, I feel like I just did so much today, you know, I may read a little bit more of Mrs. Dalloway, or I may just watch another, like, five episodes of Sex in the City, either would be a quality option in which to spend my night or I may go to sleep which also sounds amazing but I'm gonna try to keep reading for you people because you know content but not right now <laughs> first day of classes pour moi and thankfully well not thankfully I really am not necessarily thankful for this but you know public safety I only have one class today and it's online so I just thought I would sit down and give y'all a little wrap-up rundown what have you of the books that I read during this reading vlog was it as much as I thought I would read no I definitely overestimated my skills and I also underestimated the pure grip that Sex in the City has on me. And as well, this is on me, I definitely picked books that maybe don't lend themselves very well to the reading a lot at one time mentality because they are either quite experimental or just sort of slow paced or very kind of hard to get through in a sense, but we'll get into that. Did not read as much as I thought I would, um, but I did finish Sex in the City. So that's good. I recognize this isn't a Sex in the City watching vlog. It is a reading vlog, but you know, any form of content will accept. They're all stories. So the first book that I finished was Secret History by Donna Tart. In terms of just like a good page turner and like mystery and intrigue and all that, like this book was really great. I just wanted to know what was going on. Again, ultimate dark academia. They're calling glasses spectacles, you know, they're talking to each other in Greek. Like every dark academia trope you can imagine it is there. But that also ended up being some of what I didn't like about this book. There were kind of just two issues I had with it that never really got resolved in my opinion. The first one being the majority of like the main characters in this novel are men and the female characters that are there are much less developed even within the like core group of students who commit the murder. One of them is a woman and the way she's framed is just very like idyllic. She's like this perfect intelligent woman, especially among the main characters. All of the men are very complex and flawed and there's a lot of attention given to making them feel more real and authentic. And I didn't feel like the same could be said for Camilla, the closest thing to like a female lead the book has. And then my other issue with the book is these characters, most of them are very well off they are all just like incredibly elitist and classist obviously that's like characters are meant to have flaws so like I, it's not like i'm expecting these characters to be perfect but i feel like it wasn't ever something that was addressed there are special especially moments that it's like startlingly clear that according to these people if you don't have like a college education or if you're just someone living in Vermont and a farmer, they think that you are not as deserving of life and happiness and fulfillment as they are. I just really wish that since she included that so heavily, it could have been kind of unpacked a bit more. And like, I would have loved to see them like actually reckon with their elitism and really have to confront that and like face consequences because of that. But I never really feel like they did. So it kind of feels like they just got off in that sense. And so yeah, those were the two things that like I had issues with, but beyond that though in terms of just like being an entertaining read i did really enjoy this and it did make me so excited to go back to uni to take classes to have those like you know kind of pretentious very pretentious intellectual debates that you know are so stereotypical of dark academia i think i gave this one a 9 out of 10 because again it was very enjoyable and even though it's like over 500 pages I read it within like a few days so it was great to just dive into this whole world and Donna Tartt's writing is gorgeous like I love 
the way she writes so much, both in this and her other book, The Goldfinch. Her writing is absolutely beautiful, so cannot fault her for that. All right, then the next book I read was Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This novel follows basically a day in the life of this woman named Mrs. Dalloway as she prepares for a party and along the way the perspective of the novel will shift to various people she comes into contact with whether that is like an old lover or um, someone she just like bumps into on the street who is like a soldier that's you know dealing with PTSD. The novel plays around a lot with time and like any you know a character might smell something or see something or like have a thought and all of a sudden you're like diving into a flashback in their life but there's nothing in the book to really indicate that you are entering a flashback so you really have to be paying attention to know if what you're reading is happening now or happened like 30 years ago. The writing in here again absolutely gorgeous. Virginia Woolf like she knows how to write like and you know she was a big part of the modernist movement. She's a famous woman. I could totally see why reading this book. However because it's so elusive in terms of like when things are taking place and whose perspective you're reading from because again like the perspective shifts aren't accompanied by like sometimes even a paragraph break like it's very just flowing from one thing to the next. It did at times make it difficult for me to pay attention. It's one of those books that like if you're really interested in how language works and how language can be used and manipulated in different ways then I think you would really love this but if that's not for you if you're just kind of looking for a bit of a lighter read or an easier read then like maybe this isn't for you. However there were also other parts where the way she's describing someone's like interior life is so beautiful and so like poignant that even though this book is like not even 200 pages she fleshes out all of the characters so well so cannot deny her that and I give this a seven and a half out of ten. All right then the next book I began I actually did not finish unfortunately and that is If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvino. I am currently on page 103 so I'm like a little under halfway done. I knew going into this book that it was considered very experimental in its form and that it was composed mainly of like story fragments but I didn't really think about how that would then make it less investing to read because the story keeps changing and the characters keep changing. You have these two characters. The first one is just named you so it's like these sections are narrated in the second person and then the other character is Ludmila. Basically they are on the hunt for these different types of books because at first they start reading one book and then they find that it's like completely blank at a certain point and so then they keep trying to find the rest of the story but then as they try to find it and they think they found it it's really the beginning of another story and so then they're gonna try to find the rest of that story and it like keeps going on and on. So you have like those chapters and then between each of those you have the actual stories that they keep reading. It's a cool way to tell a story in a very interesting form but again because after each little fragment at least up till where I am you're not returning to those characters again like you return to you and Ludmila but at least thus far they're not incredibly developed and so it doesn't give me a lot of urgency to read. While I appreciate it from like a stylistic point of view at least where I am right now being like 100 pages in hasn't like gripped me you know I'm not like it doesn't have the same hold on me that Sex and the City had. We can put it like that but few things do clearly. But yeah I'm definitely gonna keep reading this because I am curious to see like what it all amounts to but it just might take me a bit longer than this reading vlog allowed for. Of course me being so ambitious and not following through in those ambitions I did not even begin Speak by Lori Hoss Anderson shiny but um probably after I finish If on a Winter's Night a Traveler or if I just need another book to read during that I will start it but yeah I would say overall I didn't read as much as I thought I would however I did read quite a lot if you would like to follow me on my socials on Goodreads um, everything is linked down below I also have a website where I publish some of my own writing if that so interests you and I will also link that below. And then as well included in my socials, I have a little bookstagram account where I give out like full reviews for every book I read, even the ones I don't talk about on this channel. So again, if you just wanna see all of the things I'm reading, that is available to you. Thank you so, so much for watching this little reading vlog of mine. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Any of y'all who are returning to uni or have already, best of luck, we've got this. It'll be great. If you like this video, absolutely, you can hit that like button. If you have a comment, please comment it. I would love to read your thoughts. 
And you know, if you just dig the vibe, if you dig the energy, if you just, you know, find yourself so gravitated towards my personality, then absolutely subscribe. I would be happy to have you. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.